This is King Aegeus, who was king of Athens in what we call ancient Greece. And who knows exactly when, but let's say 1200 BC. The name Aegeus is supposed to translate as goat or goat man. Maybe he's not literally a goat himself, but he could have started as a goat herder, maybe. I think I'll have to do another video sometime to look more closely at what he might represent. Anyway, due to a sort of a peace treaty with Minos, the king of Crete, who was the fierce leader of the Minoan Sea People, a warfaring civilization and ruling power in the Mediterranean in the Bronze Age, King Aegeus is required to send seven young men and seven young women from Athens to the island of Crete so that King Minos can sacrifice them to a terrible beast which is half man, half bull called the Minotaur, the bull of Minos. The Minotaur lived under the palace of Minos in a labyrinth which, by the way, was constructed by Daedalus, the architect, whose son Icarus flew too close to the sun, which famously melted his wax wings. Well, one day, King Aegeus talks about this upcoming obligation to his long-lost son Theseus, who he's only been recently reunited with. They decide that this situation with sacrificing the sons and daughters of Athens can't go on. Theseus says that he will sail to Crete as one of the seven sons to be sacrificed, and he will kill this beast so it will never be a problem for them again. Aegeus knows it's a very dangerous undertaking to ask of his son, to say the least, but Theseus is already a renowned hero, like Hercules, or Heracles as he's called in Greek. And actually, Theseus has previous experience with fighting a bull from Marathon, which actually is the same bull that supposedly killed King Minos's son, Androgeus, or Man of Earth. And that was the incident which kind of started the war between the two kings in the first place. Nonetheless, King Aegeus is very worried about sending his son off on this voyage. And he asks Theseus to remember well to do something on his return. If his venture is successful, he should hoist a white sail for his journey home. But if he has been slain by the Minotaur, then his crew should keep the black coloured sail up. Well, Theseus is successful and not only kills the bull, but he escapes the labyrinth with the help of Princess Ariadne, the daughter of King Minos, who ties a thread from a ball of yarn around his waist, which crucially allows him to retrace his steps and find his way out again. Needless to say, there's more to this story, and I'm leaving out quite a lot, which I think will be worth going into another time. But meanwhile, every day King Aegeus looks out to sea, anxiously awaiting the return of his son. Now what with all the excitement and everything that happens in the intervening time, Theseus forgets to change the sails on his ship for the white ones. And then one day, when the ship comes into view on the horizon, King Aegeus sees the black sails and his heart sinks. This fateful day he had dreaded for so long has become reality. And full of grief, and guilt for having sent his son off to die. He hurls himself off the cliffs to his death onto the rocks in the sea below. And so, legend has it, this is how the Aegean Sea got its name. Even though if you look at it on a map, to me, it looks to be just part of the Mediterranean Sea. Which, by the way, means middle of the earth. And if you didn't know that, don't worry, that was staring me in the face for years and it never occurred to me. Very often you don't notice things that are so obvious because in a way they're too close to focus on them properly. Now, in these kind of myths and legends, 
Some people debate about whether they're true, historically accurate, or maybe based in truth and just embellished somewhat. I have a feeling that they're all mostly rooted in truth at the very least, but I think the question of how and when exactly they happened is not as important as their use in teaching us things like morality, causality, and people's motivations, and getting us to think about all sorts of ideas that might not be directly related to the story, but allows our minds to wander in all sorts of useful directions from having heard it. That's why I think it's probably not a good idea to tell people what the moral of the story is. For starters, there's likely more than one simple conclusion to be drawn, and certainly more than one follow-on thought to be had from listening to a classic story such as this. But if you spoon-feed the moral of the tale to them, then it's not going to make as much sense to them as it would have if they'd arrived at it for themselves. And that may be why none of us can be told how to live our lives or what the meaning of life is without having first lived it for ourselves and made all our mistakes along the way. If we had made a flawless run at it, we'd have learned nothing. When I was a kid and I was told this story or the children's version of it, which is pretty much just what I've told you, I said, but that's stupid. Why wouldn't he just wait until the ship came in and check to make sure Theseus wasn't on board? Or at least talk to the crew and find out what happened. I mean, it might have been that Theseus was still in Crete and the crew had given him the white sail to use in another ship. He could have just waited a little while longer to see what the real story was, whatever it was, and still thrown himself off the cliff later. If it had turned out to be the worst case scenario he'd been expecting. Yeah, maybe I wasn't that precocious as a child, but that's along the lines of the contempt that I have for it, you know? So if there's a moral of the story, it seemed to me to be just a longer, more annoying version of look before you leap. You know, check things out properly before you go making any hasty decisions. Wait until your ship comes in. And there's another moral too, which is if you say you're going to do something, this is sort of like a corollary to the first moral, if you say you're going to do something, then you'd better keep true to your word and do it. So say what you mean and mean what you say. While you're engaging in revelry, you should think of who might be anxiously awaiting news of your safe arrival. And again, this is another twist on it, maybe. If you are prone to being forgetful, and you know that there's something you have to do later, especially when you're in good spirits and having fun now, then you should set a reminder for yourself so that you don't forget. And actually, this reminds me of when I was a rebellious teenager and often went out partying with my friends and I would say to my mom, who I felt was interfering and overprotective, that I wasn't sure when I was going to be uh, home and uh, I wasn't sure where I was going to be, but I'd promise I'd give her a call later, you know, just to let her know I was all right from wherever I was. But I never did. And I'd often stay out overnight. Maybe I'd come home the next day and she'd tell me she had been sick with worry. But I wasn't so much sorry as I was concerned with how much trouble I'd be in. So if there's anyone younger listening who is a bit rebellious like that, you may not appreciate how you can cause your parents sleepless nights. And I feel sorry in a different way now than I did then. But there's another lesson that I've learned and I've left it till last because this is the one I want to emphasize. I've taught this one to myself over and over again throughout my life. And it's something I remind myself of every time I feel like there's a black ship looming over the horizon. If things are looking very gloomy, I tell myself I should at least wait until my worst fears have actually been realised. I should take the time to assess 
the situation slowly and rationally. And there's no sense in dashing myself onto the rocks until such time as all is really lost. Remember, act in haste, regret at leisure. So many times in my life, I have found myself really, really happy. Having a wonderful time somewhere, in great company, doing something amazing that I wouldn't have previously imagined. And during whatever it is, I have just taken a moment to internally acknowledge it. At those times, I have reminded myself how I would not have been there to experience it if I had ever allowed myself to drown in a gloomy sea and how much I would have eternally regretted it if I had.